Welcome to the Choosing Happiness Podcast with me, your host, Rudrani Davy, the Happiness Lady. In these conversations, we will be discussing an uncommon way to find joy in your life with weekly special guests. Did you know you could choose your happy? Won't you come and play and discover how these magical tools could work for you? Let's do this. Well, howdy, y'all. Rudrani Davy, the Happiness Lady here for another episode of the Choosing Happiness podcast. And the crowd goes wild. Indeed it do. I even wrote a book about it. Choosing Happiness, an uncommon way to find joy in your life. How is that possible, Rudrani Davy? Well, let me just say, it is a choice. And so that's why we created this podcast to begin with, because uh, I wanted to uh, talk to other people that have managed to find their happy. Well, today, all you get is me. Mm -hmm. I know, but I'm a lot, so I guess it's okay. It is almost Christmas, y'all. It is the 19th of December, if you can believe it. Oh, my goddess. I just feel like it was just Christmas, or, you know, maybe like last month or something. Don't the days just go by so quickly? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So what would I like to talk about? I just recently facilitated a couple of classes. Uh, One Right Voice for You class. It was a one-day class, actually, a couple of weekends ago. And then last weekend, um, I did a class called Relationship Done Different. And it's based on a book called Relationship, Are You Sure You Want One? I'll have the link below. It's actually quite interesting. The couple that actually wrote this book, because they were partners at the time, Simone Millicis and Brendan Watt. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long they were together. I think it was at least eight years. Uh, And then they write this book and they break up. (laughs) And there's another class too called Breaking Up is Easy-ish. But I digress. The point being, you know, I was like, wow. I can't imagine what that must have been like for those that were marketing and promoting this book. Now they're doing all these shows and to promote the book and whatnot. And you know, what was kind of interesting is because they'd broken up, um, it gave them kind of a different spin on the whole idea because regardless of whether they were continuing their relationship or not, they weren't poo pooing each other. You know, what if all relationships could just, you know, have a season they don't last. I mean, Suffice it to say, I've had more than one partner in my life, you know, over the years. I tried marriage, too, all the things. Um, But what attracted me so much to facilitating this class, not just um, because of the words in this book, which were brilliant, but the way Simone and Brendan actually handled their breakup. A lot of class. You ask me. I mean, I'm sure there were some bumpy bits, you know. There's going to be. Goes without saying, right? And what if you could have that space of honoring, of having allowance for the other person when it gets to that point where maybe we've had enough. Maybe this is it for a while. So I I wanted to touch on a couple of things um, in the manual when I've facilitated this class, because this is something I usually point to right out of the gate when we start the class. And in Access Consciousness, the movement that this class is uh, a part of, um, we have something called the five elements of intimacy. And love is not one of them. And sex is not one of them. And actually, self-love and self-sex are not one of them either. (laughs) But let, let me go into a little bit of detail. Okay, so the five elements of intimacy, easy for me to say. Let me pull out my retainer. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, I hope I didn't just gross you out. Um, The five elements are honor, trust, allowance, gratitude, and the one that I found the hardest to actually embody, and that was vulnerability. I was always taught as a child that, um, you know, 
big girls don't cry, um, stiff upper lip, you know, don't, don't show your weakness because in this reality, at least in my experience, especially as a child, you were weak. If you cried, you were weak. If you showed any vulnerability whatsoever. And yet now I know that's actually one of my strongnesses. Yeah. Strongnesses. Yeah. What if your wrongness or what you made wrong about you was actually what was strong about you, you know? So I'm going to read a little bit from this manual and then, uh, We'll go from there. Okay, so bear with me. So the five elements of intimacy, as I said, are honor, trust, allowance, gratitude, and vulnerability. We'll get to what those are in just a moment. Kiddos, uh, if you have these elements, you can have an amazing relationship with someone because then you can contribute so much more to everyone else. You begin with you. If you notice when you have self-care, you have more energy for others. I notice it about me. So if you don't have these elements for yourself, you cannot have amazing relationships with someone else. Because, you know, you teach people how to treat you. That's been my experience. And if you're willing to treat yourself with honor, trust, allowance, gratitude, and vulnerability, you'll show others that they can have that for you as well and for themselves. Win-win, right? When you have the five elements of intimacy with you, then you can receive from other people and everything, all and everything, the universe, the trees, the birds, the, I don't know, <laughs> all the stuff. It is about receiving. For a lot of people, you know, they're so not used to receiving that the only time that they might actually touch on it is during uh, copulation, during an orgasm. Okay, I said it, said it out loud. So. Like I said, love is not one of them. Love doesn't actually create intimacy. It creates judgment, y'all. It do. You ever notice? I mean, it's like, don't you feel obligated to say when, when, when somebody says to you, I love you, don't you feel that obligation to say, I love you back? And, and what do they mean by the word love anyway? I mean, there are so many different meanings. Everybody has a different take on it. You know, I know growing up to me, love was, um, it was okay. If you love me, you're only going to sleep with me. You know, you're going to provide a roof over my head. Um, you're not going to look at other girls. You're certainly not going to cheat on me. <laughs> it's a little asinine to expect that, actually. When it, when it comes right down to it, you, you know, you're going to be like a horse with blinders on and never look at another individual as long as you live. I mean, I imagine that there were a lot of men that pined, married men, that pined after Raquel Welsh. She's still hot. Amazing. Then again, Italian ladies, what do you need to say? So mm, if you have self-love and self-worth, then you've got it right and you belong. That's what this, re this reality says. But self-love is not one of them either. And putting bodies together isn't either sex and copulation. Okay. You create intimacy by creating an intimate relationship with yourself by being vulnerable, by trusting yourself, by being in allowance of yourself and not in judgment of yourself and by honoring yourself, by having gratitude for you. Whoa. See, that's a big one. In the class, we were talking about that gratitude piece. You know, it's so easy for us to say we have gratitude for others in our world, you know, for people that have our back, our friends, the stuff. But do you ever have gratitude for yourself? And what would that look like? You know, I am super grateful that I have my back. Super grateful. I know that I'm not going to cut my arms and legs off to fit into someone else's world. You know, and not out of meanness. I'm always going to be true to what is true and real for me. I don't have to share it, but I'm not going to create myself as something different to fit into someone else's world to make them feel comfortable. I mean, how many times... Feel me on this one. How many times do you like the greatest in the room, but never as great as you? And is that a kindness to you or others around you? Because I'll tell you what, when you're willing to step up and be all of you, it shows others that they can actually choose the same. Just saying. So I'm going to break this down for y'all. To honor. It's to treat somebody with respect, not judgment. Not telling them what you think 
they should do. You think you're honoring them because you're like, you know, because of this, you should do this or because you're a man, blah, blah, or woman and all the stuff. It is to not treat your mate with disrespect, your colleague with disrespect, your family. I mean, they may all be assholes, but you could also honor them by just knowing that sometimes you're an asshole and sometimes they're an asshole and there's really nothing you have to do about it, but you don't have to, you know, drag the dirty laundry out into the world or out in public, all the things. I mean, have you ever seen like a knockdown drag out fight between two people out in the world? And you're like, Oh Lord, that's hard to look at. That's dishonoring. And to even engage in that, in my interesting point of view, is dishonoring of yourself. If you're really that miserable with somebody, wouldn't it be more honoring to say, hey, we had a season. It was nice. Thank you so much for showing up. You know, I'm grateful for the times that we had that were beautiful. And now what else is possible? What could we create now if we're honoring ourselves enough in the breakup? What if there was beauty in the breakup? And that's actually another access book by one of my friends. I'll make sure that the link is down below. These are beautiful relationship books that are very much the space of honoring. So the next one's trust. What is trust? I mean, I like to jokingly say, I'm going to trust that the guy is going to leave the toilet seat up. So I'm the idiot if in the middle of the night I fall through the toilet seat because, you know, I didn't bother to check it out first. Now, it's very interesting because in my last big relation, well, when I was married, that was one guy that actually did put the toilet seat down, you know, but just saying sometimes it happens. But you can trust that the person is going to show up the way they show up. Trust is knowing what the person will do, not what you would like for them to do, or, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I know he drinks a lot and he's cheated on me a couple of times, but if he really loves me and I show him that I love him or her or it, (laughs) this behavior will stop. Well, that's blind faith. It is. You know, I've, I know, I've known of people that have broken up marriages Well, when I say broken up, you know, the marriage must not have been very solid to begin with, whatever. And so, you know, a new person comes in, the other person's unfaithful, uh, leaves the wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, goes with this person, they're tight, everything's right, copulation is great, and then, bum, 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 this person starts having the same behavior. You know, maybe, maybe you can teach an old dog new tricks. Maybe the stripes has changed on the tiger, but more likely than not, that's probably not the case. And you can trust that this person, unless they've had some kind of epiphany or whatever, or are willing to look at the five elements of intimacy and are going to honor what works for you, which is, you know, please don't, you can look at others, but please don't sleep with them please don't leave me. Or, you know, if you want to leave me, can you have this conversation with me first? So like I said, trust is knowing what the person will do, not deciding what you want them to do based on anything. That's not very honoring either. Trust is not blind faith. (laughs) It's knowing that they're going to be the same person tomorrow that they were today. Not thinking that because you love them so much, they're going to change. Don't you wish it was that simple? Mm, mm, mm. That's not being very smart, but that's okay. It's your choice. Choose what you want. I'm just saying, these five elements are an axis. Doesn't mean you have to choose them. Um, But I have seen couples take these classes where they look at this and they're like, oh, wow, there's a different way to do this because we've been brainwashed, we've been taught a completely different way, almost like AI, you know, this is the way it's always been done. So we must do it this way. All right, let's move on. Allowance is a big one. In my interesting point of view, allowance is 
no point of view. I'll say it again. Allowance is no point of view. Allowance is everything they say or do is just an interesting point of view and has no relationship to you. All right? I like to jokingly say, it is none of my damn business what people think about me. Why should I care? That's their point of view. May not be my point of view. I don't have to align and agree or resist and react. I can just be like, hey, interesting point of view. They've got that point of view. Interesting point of view. But I've got that point of view about their point of view. You'd be surprised. I mean, that tools, that will get you out of everything. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, if you're going to get your panties in a wad about something, what happens? You get distracted. And distraction is designed to get you out of being you. But what if you didn't have to agree? What if you didn't have to disagree? You know, when you're in, when you're doing that, that's this relating thing, you know, um, you're stuck. You can't get past it. But what if you can be like, oh, interesting point of view. Hmm, never thought about it that way. I'm actually choosing this. Oh, well, that's cool. I can see why that might work for you. It wouldn't work for me, but that's cool. And, you know, don't judge a person or make them wrong for it. And don't judge yourself for not, you know, aligning and agreeing or resisting and reacting. It's, you know, it's kind of like we want to all belong to this club where we all the same. And wouldn't that be boring? Would be for me. Just saying. Okay. Gratitude is the next one. Mm hmm. Gratitude is a place in which you are grateful to the person for showing up in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm turning a page because I'm reading here. Grateful for having them any time that you have them in your world. Hey, with no judgment. Unlike love, gratitude can only exist without judgment. Love exists because of judgment. Feel me? I'm going to say that again. Unlike love, gratitude can only exist without judgment. Love has to have judgment, right? And when you're in judgment, you cannot possibly be an allowance. You cannot possibly be honoring. You can trust that are not going to go so well. <laughs> that you have. If you're grateful for someone in your life, guess what? In a way, you're giving them permission to not be perfect. And isn't that a gift? And you don't have to be perfect either. Mm hmm and that piece again where we were talking in class and I was like, okay, can y'all name some things you're grateful for about yourself? Some things you're grateful for about your partner? You know? And it kind of changes things. It's like we, we always want to find that one thing that we're just so pissed off about and it just digs the, the trench even deeper. When you could actually go, you know what? This person actually does put the toilet seat down for me. Hey, they make me a nice cup of coffee. Uh, they always scrape the windows when there's frost on my car. So I don't have to do it when I have to leave for work or whatever it is. You know? It can be these little things. But we'll t we have a tendency to take them for granted, you know? Hmm. They don't have to be perfect. Interesting point of view. It's a different way of looking at things, isn't it? Okay. I want to go on, but I have a sponsor that I'm very grateful for. So I want to plug them right when we're talking about gratefulness. Mandu. Mandu. It's an amazing 15-minute workout, y'all. And what it is is you wear this suit and you got all these electrodes in the suit. You almost look like a Borg. Now, I've dated myself. That's Star Trek, Okay. And it's all these little TENS units that uh, fire up and they make your muscles twitch and you start using muscles that you normally couldn't get to even. It's pretty amazing. And about, I don't know, six minutes in, six minutes into my workout, my endorphins kick in and then I'm grateful to be alive. Just saying. But let's hear this word from my sponsor just a minute long and you can get the rest of the story. Mandu is a boutique fitness studio concept, and we are actually the first FDA cleared 
EMS training uh, workout. And what we do essentially is that we will have a client come in, uh, we will hook them up to a whole body EMS suit, and then we perform a workout on a medical grade device called an eFit device. And that device will send an electrical current to their body through electrodes in these suits that we put on them. And this electrical current is just basically stimulating the electrical current that you already have inside your body. So everybody is made up of electrical impulses. It's what helps you walk, helps you move. We're tapping into that and making it uh, stimulate it more to where we can cause a muscle to actually contract involuntarily. So we can actually create resistance without adding a load to the body. So that is why we, as you see online, it always says ultra low impact. It is scientifically proven. It is absolutely ultra low impact. And we're back with Rudrani David, the happiness lady. Yep. Even wrote a book about it. Choosing happiness, an uncommon way to find joy in your life. And I was talking about the five elements of intimacy earlier. We got to the first four, actually. Honor, trust, allowance, and gratitude. Now I'd like to talk about the one that was the biggest hurdle for me, y'all. Lord, child, let me tell you. <laughs> Vulnerability. Vulnerability. I was always trying to show how strong I was. Not just, you know, not just a facade, but I mean, even physically. I remember when I went to college, I started lifting weights because I wanted to physically be strong. You know, people wouldn't want to mess with me. All the things. I had a, a bit of an abusive childhood. And so... I never wanted to let my guard down. It's a weird thing. You know, it's like, no one's ever going to abuse me again, at least not physically or whatever. Like I can control what other people think or do when I don't have a point of view about it. When I honor myself, eh, different take. Like I said, it's, I have no damn business worrying about what other people think of me. They have every right to think whatever they want about me. It's not going to change me. And that's the beauty of it. So vulnerability is being willing to receive anything, including the fact that the person is an asshole and that you are an asshole sometimes. Yeah, that's in this book. I love that part because it's like being willing to not be perfect, being willing to sometimes be the creep or whatever, you know, or to be sad or to be angry. I mean, some of us feel like we're supposed to be good all the time and we, we can't possibly ever get angry. We don't give ourselves permission, you know? I mean, I had a big old blowout with my family um, on my mom's birthday. <laughs> and it was just, I was just tired. And, you know, you're trying to take care of everybody and they're all trying to you know, celebrate her. And I don't know, it was, I felt dishonored and I felt like I had to say something about it. And so it was like, now because I did say something and trust me, I did apologize later. Everybody asks if they can help out. They bring a dish. They put their dish in the dishwasher, all the stuff. I don't feel like the maid. Well, you get the gist of what I'm saying, but I had to be vulnerable enough to actually get pissed off because I grew up being told I was supposed to be the perfect child seen and not heard. I'm sure none of you went through that. And I wanted to be the perfect host also, especially when it came to my family. So, you know, I blew my top and that's a type of vulnerability also. It's also a willingness to be able to, you know, just snot cry. <laughs> I am that person also. A beautiful scenery can make me cry. I mean, this morning I was sitting in my hot tub and this bird, kind of a gray look. I don't think it was a titmouse. I'm not sure. I'm really going to have to learn more about bird watching. But I was so moved by this bird just sitting there chirping that I, I felt my heart chakra opening and the bird noticed. I mean, this bird could feel me and, you know, it just started looking at me, kind of side eyeing me. And I started doing some SOP, energy, symphony of possibilities. This bird noticed, started chirping and kind of looking at me and getting a little excited. And it brought a tear to my eye, I mean, this vulnerability that I had to commune with Mother Nature and her beautiful creatures. Amazing, y'all. So I guess what I'm saying is in vulnerability, you're willing to show up warts and all 
and not try to prove that you're perfect, not try to prove that you've got it all together, right? But be there with a sense of no walls, no barriers, no wrongness, no rightness, no apologies. Hey, this is how I am. But just know this, it's also not being a doormat, okay? Like when me blew on my top with my family. It was just, it was necessary. It was me honoring me by being willing to be angry. I was never willing to be that before. Not really. Eh, you know, I got cranky pants a lot. But this was different. This was, this was an honoring of myself to actually explode the way I did. I'm not telling y'all to go out there and start screaming at all the people in your lives that make your butt itch, okay? But maybe take a breath and go, hey, what am I doing here? Why am I not willing to step up and be the greatness of me? Why am I not willing to show people how I would like to be treated? And if I have to blow my top to do that, can I be willing to, to be that vulnerable? Each of the five elements of intimacy are interconnected. Mm -hmm. If you allow gratitude to expand, for example, it holds hands with all the others and there is this vulnerability, allowance, trust, and honor that goes with that. So here's something I'm going to do. It's called the clearing statement. It sounds like gobbledygook. And we'll have the link below for that one as well. www.theclearingstatement.com where the co-founder of Access Consciousness, Dr. Dane here, and Simone Mills, is who I spoke to earlier about, about this specialty class relationship done different, explain it very well, very nicely, so you can get all the deets. So it goes like this. Mm. Excuse me, something in my mouth. And that's being vulnerable. <laughs> right in front of y'all, picking my teeth. Woo. All right. I guess I didn't floss as well as I thought after lunch. What energy, space, consciousness, choice, magic, miracles, mysteries, and possibilities can my body and I be to honor, to be the honor, let's change that, to be the honor, the trust, the allowance, the gratitude, and the vulnerability of total presence for all of eternity. And everything anything and everything that does not allow that times a godzillion, which is an amount even you can't fathom, right? Will you now destroy and uncreate it all and reclaim the infinite being you truly be? Anything that does not allow that times a godzillion, there's that godzillion again. Would you destroy and uncreate it all? Here's a clearing statement. Right and wrong, good and bad, all nine, pot and pock, shorts, and boys, pivots and beyonds. What if there was no right or wrong? What if there was no good or bad? What if it was all interesting point of view? What if you could be an allowance of all of it, all and everything, including you? Hey, including you. That's awareness. Awareness includes everything and excludes nothing. Without a point of view, without judgment. Without making you wrong. Or anyone else wrong. You don't have to agree. I know it's a crazy world right now, y'all. I don't agree with everything going on. But I'm not going to allow that to keep me in a space of cranky pants. That's when I choose my happy. I'm like, what else is truly possible here? How does it get me better than this? And those are two other tools. They can pull you out of anything. I mean, interesting point of view is a great one. But when I get so stuck that I can't even get out of my own head, I'm like, okay, what else is possible here? What else is possible here? So the universe is like, oh, what else is possible here? What else can we create and generate? And how does it get any better, universe? How does it get any better than this? Show me the infinite possibilities, you know? So that's what I got for you today. Five elements of intimacy. Mm -hmm. Could you choose that for you first? Here's the thing, y'all. Your natural state is to be happy. I mean, look at it this way. What if you were born on this planet right now and there were no other people? Well, number one, you wouldn't have any reference points. You'd have Mother Nature. 
who isn't judging you. You know, a tree doesn't get all up in itself because it's having a bad leaf day <laughs> or because it's drowning out the twigs and whatever that could have been trees underneath it. You know, it doesn't get angry when a woodpecker starts poking holes or a bird makes, makes its nest, makes its, you know, home within the branches or when the squirrels dance around it. No point of view. Zero point of view. What if you could be like a tree? So here you come to the earth and there are no other people. Who would you be? What would you create? Would you already be the five elements of intimacy with you? That's curious, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. So I guess my home play for you guys is this. <laughs> it's like you're in my class now. This is what I usually do at the end of class, you know, right? Um, Be like a tree. I commune with Mother Earth every morning. She has a heartbeat, y'all. If you're willing to listen, if you're willing to be present and be space, you'd be surprised how much the Earth wants to talk to you. It's really quite beautiful. And ask to commune with the trees. They'll just do it like that bird. You know, the other day it was a squirrel. I actually feed the squirrels. <laughs> they have squirrel food you can buy. It keeps the squirrels out of the bird food and the woodpecker food. Oh, goodness gracious. But you know, we're all creatures of this beautiful planet. And what if you were willing to actually commune with Mother Earth? And all you have to do is ask walls and barriers down and expand beyond the beyonds of this reality. So now... <laughs> your body's inside of you. You're not inside your body. You're an infinite being, y'all. And from that energy, space, and consciousness, including everything and excluding nothing, with no point of view, even for you, what could you create and generate for your life and living? What space could you be? Mm -hmm. So just a little conversation with myself today. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening now or in the future. And, uh, you know, if there's a topic you want uh, to cover or whatever, put it in the comments. I read all the comments. I do. And if you enjoyed this conversation I had with myself, <laughs> why not hit the subscribe button? And if you know of someone in your world that could use these tools, these five elements, share. I'm super grateful for you. For each and every one of you. So... And we'll have all the links below to the books and stuff. All right. So until next time, y'all, mm, the happiness lady is signing off. Ciao, ciao for now. Mm. Thank you so much for choosing happiness. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, share, and give us a like. And if you want more happy, subscribe to the Choosing Happiness membership, where you can play directly with me, Rudrani Davy, the happiness lady. How does it get any better than that?